Hi, I'm Miles McAvoy, Deputy Administrator of the National Organic Program within USDA's Agricultural Marketing Service. Today I'm going to speak on the importance of maintaining organic integrity in the supply chain and the responsibilities of certified organic handlers in maintaining that identity and integrity of organic products. I'm going to cover three modules in this training. The first module covers the organic control system that operates on a global basis. It's implemented by handlers that are involved in the organic trade, and it's verified by certifiers and competent authorities. Second, we'll provide details on organic system plans and the specific components regarding organic system plans and the organic supply chain. And the third module will be more specific about responsibilities of certified organic handlers to verify organic ingredients that they receive and ship. The training objectives uh, of today's presentation are to identify whether a handler involved in the organic supply chain needs to be certified, and you'll see that most handlers are required to be certified, to accurately understand the requirements of an organic system plan in a way that supports the integrity throughout the supply chain, explain how organic handlers verify that incoming ingredients and products that they receive are organic when they uh, receive those inputs, explain what records are needed to document compliance with different parts of the regulations. Okay, let's get started. So this is module one on the organic control system. So organic trade is expanding around the world. We have worldwide production and trade and just within the US and the European Union alone, there's over $80 billion in the organic market. This expansion in the market provides opportunities to hundreds of thousands of farmers around the world that are involved in organic production. It benefits them in terms of uh, their organic production, the income it brings to their communities, and the products that they provide to the organic market. Because of this growth in the organic market and organic trade, many governments have established control systems involving organic standards and oversight of the organic sector to verify uh, that organic products really are produced, processed, and handled under organic standards. There's a lot of money that's being made in the organic market, and some folks are trying to sell fraudulent product as organic. Very important to have an effective control system that, uh, that identifies any uh, activities of, of fraudulent products and gets that out of the system. There's a very good system in place. The majority of organic products are legitimate, coming from certified organic farms and processors that are certified to ensure that they comply with organic standards throughout the supply chain. But there are uh, fraudulent actors out there that we must make sure are taken out of the market. We must ensure a rigorous control system to ensure organic integrity from the farm to the marketplace. So the global organic control system has four major components. First of all, clear standards. And these standards that may be a little different from country to country around the world are generally harmonized and more or less the same uh, around the world. The US and the EU have the most widely used standards because of the large organic markets in those countries. The second component is the certification process, the certification of organic farms, producers, and handlers, ensuring that they are compliant and verifying that they are compliant with the standards. The third component is accreditation of those certifiers, ensuring that they are consistent in how they verify uh, the organic claims and ensuring that the certification process is complete and thorough. And the fourth component is enforcement. First, the, the certifiers have their role in enforcement under their authority and second, by competent authorities that use their authority to do things like uh, stop sale or uh, impose fines or otherwise pe penalize non-compliant or fraudulent actors. The organic control system operates globally and NOP staff oversee organic operations around the world. We conduct witness inspections, review audits, and certifier audits on an ongoing basis. Here you see an ongoing audit of organic grain production in Argentina, interviewing their farm managers and auditing records, part of this oversight process within the organic control system. 
The USDA's National Organic Program's mission is to protect organic integrity of USDA organic products throughout the world. Our vision, organic integrity from farm to table, consumers trust the organic label. Our authority is under the Organic Foods Production Act of 1990 and the USDA organic regulations. Core principles within the organic control system are effective planning to ensure that farm plans, handling plans, those organic system plans, that they meet all organic requirements, traceability from farm to market all along the supply chain, verifiable systems, including inspections and audits and records that verify that the standards are being met, clear audit trails that enable auditors to trace products from farm to market and market to farm, and comprehensive audits by competent inspectors that test the audit, that audit trails are complete and reconcile that organic handlers have received sufficient organic products, verifying their authenticity to justify the amount of organic products they sell or distribute. So the Organic Foods Production Act states that no person may affix a label to or provide other market information concerning an agricultural product if such label or information implies, either directly or indirectly, that such product is produced and handled using organic methods except in accordance with this chapter. So any kind of organic claim on a product, whether it's direct or indirect, is covered by uh, the requirements and of uh, the Organic Foods Production Act. The USDA organic regulations under 205-100A state that, except for operations that are exempt or excluded, each production or handling operation that produces or handles crops, livestock, livestock products, or other agricultural products that are intended to be sold, labeled, or represented as 100% organic, organic, or made with organic, that they must be certified. So the rules are clear that if you are involved in production or handling organic products, you must be certified and therefore under the supervision and oversight of organic certifying agent who inspects, audits, and ensures compliance with the organic standards. So if you are involved in the organic trade, selling, labeling, or representing products as organic, you must be certified unless you fall under either an exemption or exclusion of certification. So wholesalers, traders, brokers, distributors, importers, exporters, you're all considered handlers because you're involved in selling, processing, or packaging, or representing products as organic. Handlers must be certified unless you meet the narrow uh, exemptions or exclusions uh, provided for in the regulations. So some handlers may be excluded. The exemptions are from the Organic Food Production Act and provide exemptions for small farms and retail food establishments. However, I want to focus on 205-101B that provides additional exclusions from certification. These are not included under the Organic Food Production Act and they are fairly narrowly constructed. 101B states that if a product is packaged and remains in the package, then the handler is not required to be certified. So we do have uncertified handlers that are involved in the audit trail and supply chain between the farm and the market. These uncertified operations may include importers, exporters, brokers, and traders that are involved in organic sales and trade, but do not package or otherwise handle organic products. Here's some examples of operations that may not be required to be certified that may be excluded. So we see here packaged product, and as long as that product remains in the same container, uh, is not relabeled or repackaged, then these operations could be excluded from certification. I want you to note that in the upper left-hand photo, there are some packaged blueberries, but behind, you can see some unpackaged blueberries behind there. So in that particular operation, it looks like there's some unpackaged product or some package, packaging that is occurring and in that situation, that operation would be required to be certified. So a handling operation is excluded if they sell organic products that are packaged or enclosed and remain in that same container and are not processed or relabeled. So in this example, the handler of the tote bags on the left 
could be excluded from certification if they don't repackage or relabel the product. And the handler of the 50 pound sacks on the right could also be excluded. But if the handler repackaged the totes into bags, then they would have to be certified. All right, so let's go on to the role of certifiers and uh, what they do in the organic control system. They're really central to the control system doing the bulk of the inspections and auditing and verification that the organic standards are being met. So certifiers do a number of things. First, they review organic system plans. They review and approve the inputs and materials that are used, the products and ingredients that are received. If you're a handler, if you're receiving organic products or organic ingredients, they review those and verify that they meet the organic standards. They review the record keeping and the practices that are being conducted by the, the handler or producer. They uh, conduct inspections, uh, both annual inspections as, as well as unannounced inspections. They verify effective implementation of the organic system plans to ensure that those plans that are submitted and reviewed are complete and accurate and being followed. They conduct traceback and product in, product out reconciliation audits, a very important component of the work that they do. And they also issue certificates, annual certificates, transaction and import certificates, and uh, also attestation statements, were, which are relevant for Canada under the U.S.-Canadian Organic Equivalency Arrangement. Certifiers are overseen by USDA. They must follow rigorous and public accreditation requirements that are in the USDA organic regulations. The National Organic Program audits the 82 accredited certifiers uh, that are around the world. We do that at least twice every five years and we re review their management practices on an annual basis. Our audits are quite extensive, usually at least a week in length, and involve both office visits and in the field visit to uh, observe how the certifier is conducting inspections. It assesses the effectiveness of their organic control system. It targets uh, their risk areas that they've identified. And we also do additional compliance audits of these certifiers if needed to verify that they're complying with the requirements. This shows an audit in process, an audit of a certifier. So you have a, uh, an inspector in the forefront on the left that's reviewing the records. You have the, the parties involved in this uh, handling facility uh, that are uh, showing the records. And in the background, you have a USDA auditor that's observing the inspection in process. Okay, let's move on to module two, organic system plans. So there are a number of requirements in the organic system plans that are in the regulations. Uh, for the purpose of, of this uh, presentation, we're gonna focus on uh, these particular areas of the organic system plans. First, the, the organic system plans need to fully describe the practices and procedures that the handler is uh, conducting to be in compliance with the requirements. The inputs that are used, uh, organic products that are received by the operation or ingredients received and verification of how they're uh, determined to be organic. The record keeping system and that record keeping system needs to fully disclose all activities of the operation so that it's auditable and readily understood by an outside inspector. So specifically under the regulations 205-201A, the organic system plan must include a description of the practices and procedures to be formed and maintained, a li list of each substance to be used as a handling input, indicating its composition and source, a description of the record keeping system implemented to comply with the requirements, and any additional information deemed necessary by the certifying agent to evaluate compliance with the regulations which includes being able to verify that any organic products or ingredients received by the handler are compliant with the organic requirements. So your organic system plan um, needs to show how you prevent the commingling of organic and non-organic products. So an example of that would be um, if you have both organic and non-organic products, that you're storing organic products above non-organic products or that you have dedicated storage or transport bins. 
It needs to show how you protect organic products from contact with prohibited substances. It needs to ensure that any containers that you use for organic products are cleaned and uh, don't contain any prohibited substances. And it needs to show how you implement proper cleanout and transportation procedures to prevent organic product from coming into contact with prohibited substances. Certified or operations must have an organic system plan that lists each input, including its source, and this includes all organic products, all ingredients received by an organic handler. Certified operations must also have a record keeping system that fully discloses all activities and transactions in sufficient detail to be readily understood and audited. This is a very key component of the USDA organic regulations is this record keeping system and that records need to be uh, adequate and fully descriptive of those activities. So for instance, for any organic product that you're receiving, they have to be in a sufficient detail that an inspector from the outside can easily determine that the product you're receiving is certified organic from a certified organic source. So when you're importing or exporting, your organic system plan must disclose whether the operation exports or imports products and describe the records the op that the operation maintains for products that are imported or exported. It needs to identify all ingredients imported, including the source of those ingredients, and that source needs to be verified that it comes from a certified organic uh, uh, source. It needs to include the operations procedures for verifying the source, the certification, and compliance, and it needs to include labeling information for a product that's exported under a trade arrangement. Okay, let's move on to module three, verifying organic ingredients and incoming products. Uh, organic system plans and records are key for input management. Uh, organic products and organic ingredients are handling inputs, and as per the regulations under 205-201-A2, the uh, organic system plan must include a list of each input that's used by you as a production or handling input, indicating its composition and source. And in addition to that, under 205-201-A4, under the record keeping system, it, that record keeping system must describe all activities and explain how operations fully discloses all those activities and transactions in sufficient detail as to be readily understood and audited. So here's an example of some of the records that may be part of your organic system plan, part of the records that's part of your organic operation. Uh, these would be part of the records that a, a certifier would be inspecting and auditing to ensure that they're complete and adequate to fully disclose the activities of the operation. So, for instance, records verifying the organic status of incoming product with amounts, uh, certainly organic certificates for all in incoming product, organic products and ingredients, and some verification that the product is coming from the operation that uh, is certified. Of course, invoices, purchase orders, bills of lading, contracts are, are records that are reviewed, handler organic certificates, certificates of analysis, product specification sheets, raw product inventory, reports and records, weigh tickets, scale tickets, receipts and tags. The inspector will be looking at how much product was received, any kind of shrinkage that may occur during your handling of the product. Uh, so records that will uh, show that and be, be sufficient for the inspector to do that calculation. A clean truck and storage affidavits to show that the, uh, the transportation was done in a way that protects organic integrity. Uh, phytosanitary certificates and verification of non-fumigation. These are key documents that need to be a component of the record keeping system and be, uh, need to be reviewed by the uh, certifier as part of the certification process. So certified organic operations have requirements and must have procedures in place and records that demonstrate that all the products that they receive, all the ingredients that they receive are compliant with the USDA organic regulations. So there's a number of different ways that this can be done, but it needs to be sufficient to trace it back to a certified organic operation in terms of the quantity of product that was shipped from that certified organic operation. So examples of these would include 
and this is not all inclusive, but certainly an organic certificate from the suppliers. Uh, organic transaction certificates could be uh, a component. An attestation statement would be necessary if the product is coming from Canada. And an NOP import certificate would be uh, necessary if it's coming from a country that we have an equivalency arrangement with, uh, which includes uh, all the countries in the European Union, Switzerland, Japan, and Korea. Certified operations may not accept organic products without verifying the source and certification of the product. Organic system plans must describe how they do not accept organic products ingredients without verifying the source and certification of the products. This is especially critical if you're receiving products from uncertified handlers. Certified operations must clearly identify organic products in their records. Okay, so as described in Module 1, there are handlers that are not required to be certified because they're excluded from the requirements of certification. So some supply chains will have un uncertified handlers involved, and uh, so the record keeping for the uncertified operations is, uh, needs to be described. So if a handler or supplier is uncertified, who keeps the organic records? It's the responsibility of the certified organic parties to keep the records. So that would be the uh, certified organic party that's shipping the records and the certified organic party that's receiving the product. Both of those would be responsible for the records so that they can be audited and inspected and verified by the certifier. So uncertified handlers can be involved, but the records need to be adequate to trace the product from one certified uh, operation to another, including volumes and uh, verification of sources. So we've identified indicators of where there's weak control points, where there's weaknesses in the system, and we want to make sure that people understand these weaknesses and eliminate them from, from this organic control system. So first of all, uh, bulk product, uh, non-retail product uh, that may have an organic certificate. It's definitely a weakness uh, if it does, is not identified as organic. It needs to be identified as organic. It needs to have a clear audit trail, uh, both for the shipment itself and any accompanying paperwork. Uh, missing a certificate from the originating farm or intermediate handler, that would be a weakness or non-compliance. Any evidence of falsification where there could be evidence of uh, an operation name is being changed on a certificate to protect proprietary information. The information needs to be able to trace it back to the uh, certified operation. And then when product has crossed multiple borders, uh, a lack of clarity about whether the product was fumigated. So these are things that should be closely looked at by handlers and are being closely looked at by certifiers in this process. So certifiers play a very uh, important role. Inspectors are the key uh, component of that uh, in terms of doing the audits. And they are expected to conduct thorough traceback audits and mass balance audits to verify traceability and record keeping requirements. This should be happening at your operation. If it's not happening, then please let us know because that's not in the spirit of uh, what's required under the organic regulations. So certifiers check a number of different things for imports and exports. They have procedures and they're going to look at those procedures and documentation that verifies the source and certification of those products. Uh, they're also going to verify that any imported organic products were not fumigated at ports of entry. So, for instance, uh, for U.S. ports of entry, uh, port of entry control officials have records. Uh, there are APHIS records, a couple of different form numbers, PPQ 523 and 429. Emergency action notice and fumigation records are things that should be available and reviewed by the inspectors to ensure that organic products are not fumigated at the ports of entry. Other questions that certifiers may ask about imports and exports, has the appropriate supporting documentation been provided that verifies the authenticity of the product, that it is in fact an organic product and, uh, that meets the U.S. standards? Is there supporting documentation? Is it valid and is it from an authorized source? And does the operation maintain appropriate records for this imported and exported product? Is it thorough enough? Uh, does it fully explain 
all of the the amounts and products and dates of uh, when the product was received and where it came from. In closing, uh, we have a number of different resources about uh, how you can help to protect organic integrity. We have the Organic Integrity Database. Uh, this is a list of all certified organic operations under the U.S. organic system. There's over 31,000 operations that are listed. It's a, a very, very powerful database that we continue to make improvements to. It has very good search capabilities. So if you have any questions about the status of a certified operation, you can look up their status on the Organic Integrity Database and uh, further check with the certifier to verify the, the status of a particular product or operation. We also have a lot of information on our website. We have the USDA Organic Regulations, and we have the National Organic Program Handbook, which uh, provides a lot of explanation of the, those regulations in terms of guidance and instructions to certifiers about details of those organic standards on a wide range of topics regarding organic standards and the control system. We also, on our website at uh, www.ams, Dot usda.gov slash NOP. We have country specific pages that gives you more details about the, uh, the paperwork, uh, the arrangements that we have for equivalency and recognition with various countries. So if you have specific, con specific questions about particular countries, uh, you can find that information on our website. So for certified handlers, please reconfirm that you are following the requirements as described in this presentation. Make sure that you have solid documentation that any organic imports that you're receiving are certified organic from authorized certified organic sources. Request import certificates and transaction certificates from the certifier for each shipment to verify that it meets the requirements. And if you have any evidence that a product being sold, labeled, or represented as organic does not meet the requirements, please let us know. You can provide that specific information to the National Organic Program at nopcompliance.usda.gov. Thank you very much for listening, and please get in touch with us. If you have any questions, uh, we're here to help and protect the organic integrity of the whole system. Thank you.